how much land do you think you need to start a homestead? In my opinion, it's however much land you have right now, even if you don't have any land at all. I'll explain exactly what I mean by that later in this video because today we're talking about five simple steps that you can take to start a homestead. The very first thing you can do is to change your mindset. If you're anything like me, you're stuck wherever you're at. Interest rates are so high right now that you can't leave the house that you're in. You can't go buy a house if you're in an apartment because you're gonna be paying so much money in mortgage, it's not even worth it. We need to make do with what we have right now instead of waiting for what we want. Homesteading is a mindset, it's not acreage. You don't have to have the land to produce 100% of your food to start getting into homesteading. In fact, about three years ago, I lived in an apartment with no balcony whatsoever, but I did have a walk-in closet. I bought myself some grow lights, I hung them up in the closet, and I started growing food in that closet. No, I don't think that you can full on get into homesteading in an apartment, but you can start being more self-sufficient. You can start growing some of your own food and building those skills so that way someday when the interest rates go down, you can go get your own place. Homesteading is less about growing every single thing that you're eating and more about just understanding and knowing what's in the food that you are eating. Most people can't grow all their own food. Even most homesteaders can't grow 100% of the food that they eat. But instead of going to Walmart down the street, you can go a mile further and go hit the local market, go to the farmer's market, talk to your local farmers and find places that you can, that you can source these other foods that are actually gonna be healthy for you and you know what's going into those foods. This year was the first year that we really took homesteading seriously and most of the meals that we cook here at our house it's all whole foods that we are making meals out of. Thankfully, my wife is a good cook because I am not. Homesteading isn't about being 100% self-sufficient. It's about learning new skill sets. It's about being as self-sufficient as you possibly can in the area that you have, even if that area looks vastly different for two different people. Somebody might have 40 acres, somebody might be in an apartment, but either way, you can start doing these things. The second thing you can do when you start your homestead is start a garden. A garden is gonna be the fastest way to become more self-sufficient. And I know starting a garden might sound daunting, but I have a secret for you. Everybody that's ever started a garden had to start a garden at some point, so start now. And when you start a garden, it doesn't have to be a big fancy garden with big fancy raised beds, anything like that. You can start in the ground if you have property to do that. You can start in a closet in an apartment if that's what you need to do because that's what I did. If you are renting a house and you're not allowed to have a garden, a very good way to kind of get around that and still have a garden is growing containers. You can grow potatoes in totes. You can grow peppers, tomatoes in buckets. You can grow so many different things just in containers. I'm talking watermelons different squashes. You can pretty much grow anything you want in containers outside. That way, if your landlord has a problem with it, you can just pick them up and move them away. Won't be an issue. If you're limited on space, you don't have a whole lot of space to garden, look into vertical gardening. You can do things like adding arch trellises like I have here in my garden. I have arch trellises that go all the way up and down my entire garden, and that adds so much extra space in our garden. Another thing you can do is you can get vertical garden towers. We have a green stock vertical garden. I absolutely love that thing. I've done a video on that before, I'll put a link down in the description for that as well as the green stock vertical garden itself. You can even go to the dollar store. I'm pretty sure dollar stores have vertical gardens now. And utilize YouTube. If, if small space gardening is something that you wanna get into, get on YouTube and start doing some searches. There's gonna be tons of people all over YouTube that will give you all the information you need to grow as much food as you possibly can in a very, very small space. But here's a trap that a lot of people fall into when they start gardening. They grow things that they don't actually want to eat. They grow it because it grows well in their area or they hear it grows well in their area or it's something that sounds like it's cool to grow, so they grow it, but then once they start getting harvest, they don't want to actually eat it. You need to grow food that you're actually gonna eat, that you can actually incorporate into your everyday eating, your everyday meals, start cooking, make different recipes, learn different recipes, and really just kind of have fun with it. It is a waste of time, energy, and space if you're growing things that you just aren't gonna eat. And then if you're lucky, you're gonna start growing more food than you can actually eat. And that's when it gets really fun. That's when you get into food preservation. There's a whole lot of different ways you can get into food preservation between pressure canning or or water bath canning, you can get into dehydrating, freezing, those are easy ones to do, vacuum sealing, you can get into freeze drying, and that one is probably my absolute favorite. I love freeze drying. There's a whole lot of different ways to do it, and I know that can sound overwhelming, especially if you're new, but here's what I want you to do. If you get into that situation where you've got this extra food and you need something to do with it, learn one of those things at a time. Once again, go to YouTube University, type stuff into the little search bar, and start looking up how to water bath can, or how to pressure can, how to dehydrate food, all every t possible type of thing. Learn one at a time, pick one. Pick one that sounds cool to you, one that sounds fun, and go with that one until you have that one down, and then move on to the next one. Before you know it, you're gonna have an entire arsenal of skills at your fingertips that you can use whenever you want. But it's not something that you're expected to know right off the bat if you wanna get into homesteading. It's something that you learn over time by doing it and doing it and learning more and more every single day 
it's amazing. If you start learning these things today, your future self is gonna thank you for it. The third thing you can do is start composting. And it's kind of a natural transition for anybody that starts a garden, they start getting into composting. This is a terrible excuse of a composting pile here behind me. I'm gonna show that to you real quick. Don't take that as something that a compost pile is actually supposed to look like. I haven't touched it in a while. But you can compost everything from your kitchen scraps to your yard clippings. You can get a warm composting bin and you can put your kitchen scraps into your warm bin. And then that's gonna create even more fertilizer for your garden, which is amazing. You can be as involved or uninvolved with your compost pile as you wanna be. But at the end of the day, you're trying to achieve three different things. You're trying to send less waste to landfill, which anybody that has a soul should wanna send less waste to the landfills. You're also trying to use up every tiny little bit of food scraps that you possibly have. Every, especially if you're gardening, every tiny bit of food, that's the whole point of homesteading. Every tiny bit of food that you can possibly get, you wanna use every tiny bit of that. And then lastly, you're creating a nutrient rich, awesome compost to put back into your garden to grow more food with. Hey, real quick, if you're getting value out of this video, do me a huge favor. Go down, hit the like button and consider subscribing to my channel. What that does, it tells YouTube that you enjoyed this video. Hopefully, if I'm lucky, YouTube will then send it out to other people who might also enjoy this video. Thank you, I appreciate it. The fourth thing you can do is you can get chickens. Chickens are gonna be by far the easiest animal to get on your homestead to start providing food for you. But before you just run out to get your chickens, you need to look at the local regulations where you live. Depending on where you live, you might have different rules and regulations that will not let you have chickens at all. They might only let you have two chickens. Some places will let you have six chickens. Some places have no regulations at all. You're gonna see regulations against roosters or crowing hens, different things like that. So make sure you look at the regulations for your area before you go out and pull the trigger on actually getting chickens. Chickens are gonna be an excellent source of farm fresh eggs in your own backyard. You're gonna be feeding them or letting them free range and they're gonna be providing you with this healthy protein packed butt nugget. And then you can take things one step further and you can also harvest your chickens for meat. It's not something that we do. Our chickens are our pets. We keep them even when they stop laying eggs, but it's something that a lot of people do and it's a good source of food. And then as an extra bonus, you can also give them your kitchen scraps and they're gonna be giving you manure from those kitchen scraps. Then you can take that manure, you can compost it down and then you can put it back in your garden to grow more food, to give them more kitchen scraps. And it's kind of this awesome cycle. You do have to compost it down because if, it, if you take it fresh, it's too hot. You can't use it in the garden, but if you do compost it down, it becomes an excellent fertilizer for the garden. The fifth thing you can do is you can support local farms. Most backyard homesteaders can't provide all the food that they need throughout the year. For example, our potato harvest this year was absolutely terrible. We had no potatoes to get us through the winter. So what we did is we found a local farm right down the street that was selling 50 pound bags of potatoes for $15. We bought a whole bunch of those potatoes, we brought them home and we processed those and stored those for winter. So we freeze dried a whole bunch of them and did a whole bunch of different things and we're still eating those potatoes halfway through the winter. We don't have to keep going to the store to get potatoes from the store. Same with meat. If you don't have the room to raise cattle or raise pigs or anything like that for your own meat, you can find these local farms that will sell you a side of beef or a whole pig, different things like that. You can source your food from really good places and stock your freezer up or stock your pantry up. And that's what the homesteading mindset does is I can go get my food from these other sources and I can still store that food all winter long or store that food for an entire year, six months, whatever it might be. Buying locally is gonna be supporting your community and you can still buy these foods in bulk and get them put in storage. And that's especially helpful if you don't have a whole lot of land to homestead on. 